Um, I want to touch on a few things that are very critical to colour grading but very few people know about. And the first thing is, how many people here have had their eyes tested? How many people have had their eyes tested for colour? And uh, how many people know whether their colour vision is good or not? <laughs> okay, so that's the first thing. If you don't know whether your eyes are good, whether you've got any red-green colour blindness or anything like that, you don't really know what you're doing when you're grading on a television picture because you may have an issue with your eyes that you don't know about. About one in ten people have some colour degradation in their vision. And what I've got up here is a thing called a Munsell colour chart. This is a test that you can go online with and I've got the, um, the actual web address here so you can test your eyes. And the idea of this test is that it top row will take you from a very sort of faded red to a faded green and it takes you through these vague areas in uh, the human eye which is trying to get a very very even gradation between these colours and that'll give you a score and give you a clue as to where you may have difficulty with your colour rendition. I was very fortunate that I got my colour, um, my eyes tested for colour when I joined up with the ABC years ago and they tested everybody to make sure that they didn't send us out to the telecine colour grading department when we had a colour blindness problem. So I happen to know that I've got a, a very small weakness somewhere between red and green but it's, you know, my colour is about 98% so I happen to know that it's reasonable. So it's worth checking that first. <laughs> and I'll just reduce that back. Yeah, the, um, the fluoros up here are a bit of a problem. Ah, now we can see what we're talking about. <laughs> that's much better. So that's the Munsell test and there is an online one you can do, um, which I've got the address with me tonight. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to get straight into the three-way colour corrector and then we'll sort of step back a bit and have a bit of a look at how you would approach it and how you'd use it in the job. So here's one I prepared earlier. This is just a very basic shot with a three-way colour grader in it. Um, now we're going to need to ask a lot of questions just to get an idea of how many people are familiar with the three-way colour corrector. Yeah, okay, so most people are familiar with it. That's good. What we're looking at here is the three circles are affecting the blacks, mids and whites. We've got hue controls, we've got level sliders, and we've got some other little functions here which you can get into later. Saturation sliders, gamma sliders, things like that. So a quick example of how this works. There's the raw shot. I've done a little tweak on it and it just gives it a bit of a kick. And as you can see, we've got a little bit of adjustment in the sliders there. As a broad overview of how it works, just for the people who are a little unfamiliar with it, if I grab my black slider, slide it up and down, it just drops the black levels and crushes those black levels. It operates roughly speaking in the, the bottom 25 to 30% of the luminance range. Likewise the white, same thing, just a level adjustment. The mid one is very critical, that gives us a way of adjusting the mid range. What it does, it leaves the black and white points the same and pushes everything around in, the, in between. It basically affects the gamma or, or the curve between black and white and adjusts it from the linear position in the middle. It'll crush it a bit and then raise it. So that's what we're dealing with there. And then a simple saturation control down here which you can use to make black and white images or all the way up to oversaturated. So that's basically the three-way colour corrector. And I'll just go into uh, this kind of interesting one here. These shots are out of jobs I've worked on, by the way. They're, they're just arbitrary. I've just pulled them out as shots that will work. And what we're looking at at the moment is just DV PAL resolution. We're not working HD, uh, simply to make it uh, work efficiently here. This is a good example of how you might look at a shot and say, yeah, that's fine. However, it can be better with a bit of adjustment. Here's another example of that, and I'll just run that. 
television presenter looking at camera. It looks fine. Well, before we had a look at it, it looked like that. Quite dull looking, really, and, the, and not really very vibrant. So what I'm going to do is just turn it back on. And you can see it just lifts it a little bit more lightness around the face because in any kind of television program, people look at faces. That's the most critical thing, around the face area. You want to see people's eyes. You don't want them to be sort of disappearing into darkness. So let's just reset this. These little circles you see here are reset buttons. You're probably familiar with it, but if you shift reset, it'll reset everything. Right, so we'll go back to the beginning. First thing I'm looking at is whether the white is white. There's a very nice little tool on here, which is this little eyedropper here. And that selects the colour of white and it will knock out any colours it finds in white. So you need to have a look at something in the picture you think should be white. So we'll just pick up that. I reckon that yacht should be white. And if you have a look at the white colour ring there, it's just pushed it up a little bit into the magenta area. It's not probably what I would have expected, but there you go. If I pick a colour off his shirt, it'll probably be a bit different. There it is. Now I would say the shirt's more li a more likely candidate because not many boats are pure white. They're going to be made out of some material that is a sort of off-white colour. First thing I look at here is it's reasonably well exposed, but I think the skin tones are not quite right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push the saturation slider all the way up. And that'll give me a clue as to what the colours are doing in there. And it looks pretty balanced. But I think it needs a little bit more saturation and I think it needs to be lifted for the skin tones. But now we've got a, a little bit of a problem. We've stretched it so much it loses its contrast. It doesn't look punchy anymore. It starts to look a bit faded. What we need to do is bring the black levels back down again so that we've got a true black in that image to give us that contrast between the black and the white. So I'll just bring that down. And I'm just doing this by eye and I'll show you what you do with the instruments in a, in a minute. So by pulling that back down again, we get some contrast back into it. And a quick AB, you'll see what happens. It just gives it that little extra crispness. And, and it, it will also do something to the picture when you grade like this. It creates a slightly more three-dimensional look to the image. And these days, I think that's fairly critical to try and make things look really solid and not, not sort of flat. In terms of how we monitor something like that, we've got all these waveform monitors and beautiful scopes and things, which I'll get into a little bit more detail in later so you understand how to use those. But effectively, when I'm grading, I'm looking for the white level up here, that 100% white. And if I click on it, down here in the black. And I'm also looking at this little thing here. This is your friend. That tells you when you've got stuff going above white. Anything that's illegal, anything that's going to be rejected if it gets sent out to a television network, they're going to look at that and they're going to say, we can't broadcast that, go and fix it. And I'll send it back to you. So if I go back to the colour grader, I can simply grab my white slider. If I just move that across a bit, so you can see the uh, two things. Sorry about the laptop, it makes it a little bit difficult for this. but You can see how that moves up and down. And I can force it into clipping. But I'm going to pull that back. I also notice that the black levels are crushed a little bit. You'll see it down there. They, if I just scroll that back a bit, right on the edge. So you can do it by using the scopes to give you a clue as to exactly where the, white, where the black levels are. And that um, can be very beneficial when working on an LCD screen because they're not a broadcast TV uh, monitor as such. And so they can be a bit limiting in terms of what the colours are doing. If you use the scopes, you can get around any difficulties with knowing whether your LCD screens are accurate or not. So that's a, a little, little broad overview of how that colour grader works.